going on everybody this is Jeff with living in Arizona and today we're going to talk about Phoenix being overpopulated people saying there's too many people here and this keeps coming up because uh, no matter where you go on the freeways or all around town people are like where's all these people coming from so I've heard people say the reason they're choosing to move to Tucson or maybe even other places around Arizona like Prescott or the Verde Valley Cottonwood that area is because Phoenix appears to be getting overpopulated. Now, uh, by, by many standards, the population density in, in Phoenix is very low. It's just, it's such a big city that it feels like there's a lot of people, but population density would mean that people are, you know, living on top of each other. So that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. We're gonna go over some stuff that you may or may not already know, and some stuff that you might wanna know, and you're gonna walk away from this video feeling a little bit more educated. So if you're new to living in Arizona, feel free to subscribe. We've now got 4,000 subscribers, so thanks to you guys who are subscribing and keeping up with us because that's really great. And thanks to everyone who's been liking these videos because that's what's helped get the community, uh, grow the community, is when you like these videos, that helps get us out there because Google or YouTube prefer, considers that a good thing when people like videos. Also, uh, We've just had a, a massive surge in our Facebook group here, Living in Arizona, link in the citation below. You guys can just click that, but you can see, I mean, we've got a lot of people just coming in here and hanging out and uh, yeah, people asking questions and all that. So it's a great place to ask questions. It's like a forum. I mean, it's a community and people are answering questions. It's not just me talking in here. You can see a lot of people are hanging out. So feel free to join this group and keep up with us. Anyway, let's go ahead and dial this in here. So, um, as you know, we've mentioned this in a couple other videos, Maricopa County is considered, or, uh, Maricopa County is considered the, uh, fastest growing city in the United States, right? Now that's in terms of population, uh, by the numbers. Okay. But that's numerically, that's not including statistics. So statistically there might be a smaller city that's growing more percentage wise because it's got a smaller population but when it comes down to hard numbers more people are moving to Phoenix or Maricopa County which all, almost all of Phoenix lives in Maricopa County so now you know that right in case you didn't know but you can see Maricopa County ranks as fastest growing county in the United States so you can see there is some validity to this in case you're wondering the name of the county where Tucson is is called Pima County I live in Pinal County which is in between Pima County and Maricopa County and so even though I'm in the Phoenix metro area, Phoenix has grown so far, it's starting to overflow into other counties like Pinal. I am literally on the fringe of Pinal and Maricopa. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and, and show some more stuff about this because it's important. Now, if you're wondering where Phoenix or any of the Arizona cities rank in terms of densely populated country, or cities in the United States, you can see Arizona doesn't even make the list. Places like New York, California cities like Los Angeles, even Miami, uh, Boston, uh, you know, e these are incorporated places in the metropolitan areas, but most, for the most part, New York, Los Angeles, Philly, Boston, Chicago have some of the most densely populated places, and there's not a single Arizona city on here. Now, to the, to the contrary to that, there is this, um, urban sprawl that requires you to have to have an automobile and basically they can't even have a train system in these cities because it's not densely populated enough and it sprawls everywhere so in order to get from one end of the city to the other say Peoria all the way down to Queen Creek I mean you're gonna have to take freeways and they don't even have the, the freeway systems can't even keep up with the sprawl that's just going in all directions from Buckeye and the other side to uh, Santan Valley all the way down to Florence and Coolidge all the way across down south to Maricopa and then in the north you have Anthem, Black Canyon City and you have Peoria extending all the way out even towards Wickenburg now like Wickenburg used to be the edge of nowhere I actually Wickenburg wasn't even the edge of nowhere it was its own no place like home you know like way out there so just keep that in mind urban sprawl is playing a factor in the fact that the densely pop so you're trading urban sprawl for densely populated but there's a lot of people here in uh, Phoenix and if you want to look at the Phoenix growth rate just by population I mean you could see uh, we've got a great deal of population growth that's taking place here uh, if you look at the demographics Phoenix is the sixth largest city in the United States according to the 2010 United States Census Bureau 2010 that's nine years ago I mean that's almost a decade ago but the point is is that the population then was 1.45 million 
Phoenix ranking as the sixth most populous city was a drop from the number five position it held since the U.S. Census Bureau released its information in 2007. So, you know, uh, believe it or not, the population growth in Arizona did slow down. But now, as of 2017, if we just look at the numbers, right, or 2019, you could see that uh, in 2016, the population was estimated to be 1.563. That's just in Phoenix. So it went from, it grew 100,000 people just in the city of Phoenix. That's not even including the metro area. Um, that's actually over a six year period. That's not a, that's not a massive growth. Six. I mean, I've seen numbers where Phoenix was growing 35 to 40,000 people per year. Uh, you know, and, and it's, it's, it's not really cool to like show that off, but anyway. If you're wondering what the racial composition of Phoenix is, it's 65% white, 6.5% um, African American, 6% non-Hispanic. So why do they always do that? I don't know why they always mention that. Native American, 2.2%, Asian, 3.2%, and then other races you can see comprise of less than 1%. And then the second largest demographic, which I guess is why they say non-Hispanic, is 40% because if you took 65% and 40% you're at 105% whatever happened to the calculating by 100% but um, yeah Latino Hispanic is definitely the second largest demographic in Arizona or in Phoenix in particular so just keep that in mind now if you also wanted to see uh, population of cities in Arizona so you wanted to say find other non less densely populated cities um, you're really looking at Tucson <laughs> as your secondary, but even Tucson is expected to grow because this whole thing right here is going to be called the Arizona Sun Belt, I believe. And the Arizona Sun Belt is to connect Phoenix and Tucson and everything in between, which I will have to uh, look up for you in another video. We're going to make a video talking about that, but that plan is the basically the combination of the two big metropolises creating a megatropolis. And they have these megatropolises kind of like what you have from New York to Philly, where everything in between New York and Philly is kind of filling in, or New York to Boston, or even DC to Baltimore, where it's just kind of, it goes from two big cities. You know how it kind of starts out, you have, like even in Phoenix, you have Scottsdale, Phoenix, Mesa, Chandler, Queen Creek, blah, 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 Peoria. All those used to be its own little town and nothing was in between. And then all of a sudden, the whole urban sprawl just swallowed the whole thing up. And now what you're having is two metropolitan areas of Phoenix and Tucson kind of creating this megatropolis that's supposed to be completed by 2050. And so this whole area in between here from with basically Casa Grande being in between uh, is going to all be connected under this mega thing. And that's why I say they need a train already. Bring the train. But because we don't have densely popula dense populations or dense densely populated cities, the government or the, the, the city planners haven't signed off on a mass transit system. They, they just do the tram and they're trying to see if people will use the tram. But the problem why people don't use the tram is because it's slow, it's inefficient, and it's, you know, they don't have like first, second, and third class amenities on there. Like some people who are who, who are business people don't want to sit next to someone who's, uh, you know, homeless and, you know, maybe may high on meth or something, right? You know, because it, it might not be safe. Uh, parents, mothers might not want to sit next to someone because typically people who uh, ride on the metro system or on the tram, they might not have jobs and they might be on drugs because they don't have cars. So they ride the metro, but they need to segment that to where like if you're a mother and a child and you want to pay a dollar and 50 cents extra than the guy who or girl who's on drugs, you should be able to get a different class where you don't have to share the coach. It's it's just about safety, but it's also about, you know, they, they do first class on planes, right? Like you could go from economy, you even have business class, and then you have first class. So why can't they do that on the train system? Why haven't they done that? They should. They do that in other cities. In Dubai, United Arab Emirates, you can pay for first class travel and transit. And that's just, you know, it's just if, if, if you can afford it, then, you know, you can afford that extra comfort, right? And safety, some would say. Because let's be real. Um, a mother with a stroller and a three-year-old in her arm is not going to want to get on trains if there's dangerous people uh, that are going to be, you know, staring at them. Uh, it, it's just women don't, or mothers don't do that. And they, and until the city of Phoenix figures out a way to make that happen, you're going to have that problem. But um, 
in the state of Arizona has a pop a total population of over seven million. Its capital is Phoenix, so you could see this. But I, I bring up all this stuff because people are concerned about the population or being overly populated because you get on any freeway here in Arizona and you see sometimes you get massive rush hours and people don't like driving on these freeways when there's a lot of cars because what happens is you get these guys in these F-350s and they'll come blaring up uh, 75 miles an hour and then you got the semi the guy who's going from Albuquerque to Los Angeles with the truckload he's going 65 and you're right there in the middle and then there's like a car in front of you and, and it's like whoa man these freeways are crazy you know and that's right in the heart of Phoenix. So you can see why people are kind of complaining about this. And I, I don't think population is the problem as much as the way that the city planners are looking at handling that population's uh, interactions. So it's like kind of take the stress off by creating alternative transportation methods, which kind of relieve the pressure on all the freeway systems. So anyways, guys, if you're new to this channel, uh, subscribe and like the videos check us out on that Facebook group I'll put the link below you can join that group ask all your questions there's a community it's a forum and we'll see you guys next time